We're talking week 11 now in the NFL, Jim. And uh, when we last spoke, we had an opportunity to kind of wrap up week 10, even though uh, we had the Monday night game. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, we, we just want to let everybody know if you failed to see that show, well, you, you missed our, our, our pick on the money game, which had nothing to do with either one of us, but it had to do with our totals genius, Victor King, uh, who gave us the under in the Miami Ram Monday night game. And that's exactly what happened. We gave you the awesome trends of the reason why the under was the play. So hopefully uh, some of you guys played it. Anybody who missed it, well, that's okay because uh, we'll have many more of those to come. But yeah, uh, good talking to you again, Jim. Well, Victor's amazing with the totals. He's, he he uh, totally, totally, excuse the pun, focuses on that. And he's very, very good at it. And I wish I'd have just done that because I had the Rams and that was, that was a disaster. I can't believe how bad they looked, how bad they looked. Yeah. You know what? It actually looked like, I think in general, and this is what happens a lot of times, especially early in the season in the NFL, which is why you should never make rash judgments on teams after the first five or six games. Sometimes you just get bad matchups. And that's what I think the Rams are with the Dolphins. Just a bad matchup for the Rams because the Rams are about, they want to pass the football. They want to take advantage of those two receivers as best they can. And the Dolphins have one of the best, if not the best secondaries in the NFL. It's just a bad matchup. And, um, and we told you also what kind of a need game it was for both teams, but especially the Dolphins. The Dolphins did not want to drop to two and seven uh, because th that would have pretty much put him out of it. As we can see here, we're going to pop up the, uh, the the latest playoff standings. And as you can see here on the, on the on the side of the AFC, the Dolphins have now snuck in their 10th right now, which we would think that's an issue, but it's not because they're only a half game behind the Colts and the Bengals. So theoretically, you know, they get a win. They're four and six. They're tied with them. And that only puts them a game behind the Broncos for seventh. And we've got a long way to go. And the Colts and the, and, and and the uh, Broncos have two have tough games this week. And by the way, the Colts just <laughs> benched Flacco again. Yeah, that's that's and, what we said on Monday. And they're starting Richardson, which makes sense. I mean, yeah, we we, talk, we talked about it. You're not going to win with Flacco. I mean, I mean he could have because he did it last year, but it didn't work out this year. He just no. isn't that, that good anymore. And you might as well just play the kid yep. and see what you can what you can do with him. So here are the here's the playoff standings. Of course, we all know the teams at the top. Uh, as far as uh, down here, where it really matters, uh, really, again, as I said the other day, the, 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 the NFC. Just looking here and seeing that they have teams like Washington and Green Bay at sixth and seventh. Boy, is that a strong uh, group of teams at the top part of the NFC because. Anybody can see Washington and Green Bay making a run to the Super Bowl, and yet they're sixth and seventh right now. And you got the 49ers, the defending uh, NFC champs, at eighth. Um, and uh, and then you even have teams like Seattle and the Rams and the Buccaneers, which are, which are teams that can make a run uh, that are a few games back. So I think that's going to be the really intriguing part because nobody's really looking at the Colts or even the Dolphins so far. You know, the Broncos are a nice story, but, you know, it's still they're a new kind of team to the to the playoff run. But the NFC, it's going to be very intriguing to find out who makes that final uh, spot or two this season. When you, you flash that up, they got the Bears at nine, you got the Seahawks at 10, and you can go lower there. What's what's 11 Rams? Well, the Buccaneers, I mean. They're Buccaneers in it. Are, they just got to I mean, get you, healthy. I, I know when you look at the records, I mean, all Atlanta has to do is start to lose, which they did last week, and the Bucks start to pick up and win. Only one team's coming out of that division, and it easily could be the Buccaneers again. Possibly, yeah. They got a, They lost both games to Atlanta, so they're in a little bit of a – No, they have they get, a problem. Yeah, they're but, three games back now of Atlanta in reality. Yeah. But, you know, when you take um, – cousins and put him outdoors in denver this week yeah he's he's an indoor guy yep and um i mean there's a lot can happen in the next eight weeks but let's the, take but, but the uh but the nfc has quarterbacks that are way better 
Yes. And what we're seeing in the AFC. I mean, I'm not picking on the Jets, but every week the Jets are favored, and I can never understand it. Well, at least this week, it's a lot it more. Might, it might make sense. <laughs> yeah, this week is the first week it, I can. I, all right, you want to favor them over the Colts? I'm okay with that. But other than that, yeah, they have. They shouldn't have been favored the last five games before that. Um, but taking a look at the games in general. Matter of fact, I can pop uh, up the. Uh, take a look at uh, the games here. Let's see. Starting on Thursday. So we've got uh, the Eagles are three and a half. There's the line, the over and so forth, the money line. Uh, and in this one, uh, who would have thought it uh, except me that Washington would be in the race for the uh, NFC East. Uh, they're a half game back in Philly, so keep that in mind. So that's why this would be a big game for Philly, a much bigger game actually for Washington because of the fact that they're a half game back. So if they lose the game, they're now a, they're now in a situation where they could all of a sudden – uh, be two games back, especially with the tiebreaker. So a much bigger game in that respect for Washington. It looks like they might get Brian Robinson back. He's missed the last couple of games uh, in the backfield uh, with a hamstring injury. Uh, now keep this trend in mind. And anytime I talk about trends, I'm always going to be spitting out trends. And I'll have a link in the description for Mark's uh, Playbook magazine. I know you might think it's late in the season to order this, but I don't think it's ever too late to order the magazine because there's still a lot of football left. And the trend I'm talking about in this one, Dan Quinn, head coach Dan Quinn, when he's coming off a loss as a favored team, the following game, he's 4-17 and 17 against the spread. So uh, that does not look good for Dan Quinn. But I will say this because it's the first time it's happened this year. I'm always willing, even in these crazy trends that are – like 21 games, I'm always willing in that first game of the season, of the new season, or, or a head coach on a new team, I'm always willing to give him one shot to find out if that trend will change because everything's new. So we'll find well, this, out. This is, this is a great debate subject because let, let's look at Dan Quinn. He has a different offensive coordinator. He has a different defensive coordinator. He is a different owner. He has different offensive line players. He has different defensive players. Yeah. And he's playing in a different city. Yep. And he's got multiple years extra experience from the Atlanta days and the Dallas days. So when you talk about trends, I take all I have to always take into consideration what has changed for yep. this gentleman and the situation that he's in. Um, I look at, I'm going to say Dan Quinn is probably a better head coach than Sirianni. I mean, Sirianni. I believe so. Criticized. Absolutely. I believe so. Yeah. And they're both so, Super Bowl losers. Right. But only one lost the 28 to three lead, <laughs> which That's is true. absolutely incredible that I can That's even true. say that or even witness that. Yes, you know, but the there's a lot of things that are different there. Now, uh, do I believe that Philadelphia is the better team? Yes, I do. They have more experience. They have a lot of depth. They're starting to play better. They started off a little slow. However, when you have a quarterback like Daniels, it, who is stepping up in class, by the way, playing Pittsburgh's defense last week and now Philly's defense this week, is – they're, they are stronger defenses that, than what he had to face in many of the games going into the Pittsburgh game. So, yeah. yes, he's stepping up in class, and there is going to be regression. I mean, he is obviously a very young quarterback in the league. But it's it, – and this is why Philly is taking some money um, because of that, because you, you do have Hurts who's – been around the league a few years and he's proven himself and he almost won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Um, you're definitely looking at Philadelphia's possibly the better team, better experienced quarterback, and they're at home. And that's why you're probably going to see, I think you're going to see fours on this game, but when they, the fours pop up, the sharp players, the money guys, the guys that look for numbers, and forget about what teams the name is on the jersey. 
they're going to say that four. I'm going to grab that four because it's like buying a stock. You know, I want I want to lay. I want to buy it at three fifty and not at four dollars. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, keep in mind too. You mentioned uh, he was playing Pittsburgh. Um, really, if you look at it, Philly is in one of those stretches as well. Uh, Cincinnati's defense has been the big problem with them, as we talked about, even though they're a good team. And that was their most convincing win of the season. Um, we mentioned that uh, a few weeks ago on the Playbook Experts show, uh, which you can check out uh, either at Playbook Experts YouTube channel or, of course, ProLine. We'll have links in the description here at our lads uh, as well. Um, but checking out their recent uh, opponents, I mean, Jacksonville, Dallas, Giants, so, you know, the Eagles uh, offensively uh, have not faced uh, a, a team that is as good as Washington is uh, probably for a good month. So makes it an intriguing matchup, a good matchup. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Washington in this one uh, because even though I don't like taking teams as an underdog un 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 unless I think they can win, even though last week we saw a lot of that, we saw a lot of teams – uh, lose and cover, which was very unusual. And and I got beat big time on one of them with the Lions in Houston. Uh, <laughs> but it, that was very unusual. We had like three or four of those circumstances in one week where losing teams were covering small spreads. Uh, so, but I'm going to go ahead and take Washington because I think they can win the game. Plus, like you said, I'm probably going to get three and a half to four points. And like I said, I think they're a little bit more um, – this is a little bit more of a bigger game for Washington than it is for Philly – Either way, it should be a good one tomorrow night. Okay. Uh, Minnesota, Tennessee, I don't think anybody really cares about this one. Uh, except Sam Darnold better better get quick. Get, he better get better quick because that performance on Sunday, if that had come in his first performance of the season, uh, people would be uh, shaking their heads and going, what on earth are we going to do this season in Minnesota with Sam Darnold, the quarterback? But the old Sam Darnold came back. Last week, and I he's got a. You had the same kind of performance from golf. I mean, my God, he threw five yeah. interceptions. I mean, but, it was yeah, he did. Very yeah. weird situation. But yeah. when you look at the when you look at the stats from the Minnesota game, they out yarded the other team by almost five to one. Yeah, but they had to settle for field goals, and they I had know. the turnovers. So yeah, Minnesota. Uh, they're a six point favorite here against Tennessee. They, I would stay away from this game. If anything, I think Tennessee might not, may not actually be a bad money line play. I, I, after the way Minnesota has looked recently after the five game win streak, I think they're vulnerable to anybody. We saw that last week, back to back road games. You know, if, if I was going to take the game, I'd probably just take, I'd throw, I'd throw a shot at the money line, by the way, Tennessee's one and eight against the spread this year. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Green Bay and Chicago. So this is one that I really like. So, you know, we was going over the wise guy picks. So Jim and I were in the contest with uh, a bunch of wise guys, and I'm not one of them. But uh, anyway, uh, we got to pick two teams per week. And I actually had like six games I really liked this week, really? which is a real <laughs> unusual. This is one of them. I really like the Packers. Uh, and a lot of reasons why, um, and, and some of our trends, but the trends are the icing on top. I've got to like the team first. And I really like the game. I like the coming back from the bye. I don't think they were playing as great as they could have. They were a little sluggish going into the bye. They had the blowout loss in the Detroit. They needed the bye. They needed to kind of regroup. And I think that's going to help them out. And then you got Chicago, who looks awful right now. They just oh, fired their offensive coordinator. So they bring the passing game coordinator, who was the offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers last season. Yeah, and how did that work out for him? Oh, Not was, good. No. So uh, we got the rookie quarterback struggling. So, yeah, I think this is a good fight. And throw in it. Now, so the throw in the trend here. This is the trend here. One of the best trends of the week, Jim. The Green Bay, and this is not even a this is a trend anybody can come up with because it's just this is one of those things where I I actually only found this out because I was looking at it myself. I'll always look at the division matchups. I'll look at their you know what's great about the playbook magazine is is Mark has put it so he's got the last ten years. All right, so you can look at the last ten year schedule. So I always look at the division matchups. How did they fare in division matchups because they play twice a year? The Green Bay Packers are ten and zero straight up 
and against the spread in the last 10 against the Bears. And it's probably going to go to 11. <laughs> the Bears are playing. And, I mean, I don't see any any upgrade at all to the Bears with the offensive coordinator. They needed to fire the head coach if they wanted to get any kind of bump. Uh, and, and the number one draft choice, Williams, he, he is totally lost. Yeah. I mean, wow. Totally yeah, this is this is one of those things that you really look. I, I'm not saying that I I think it's a bad move. I think it's a good move. The problem is is that you should have known this before. I mean, how did you miss this that bad when you bring in a guy as the number one draft pick quarterback? You better have an idea that the guy that's going to be teaching him, your coordinator has to be the right guy. You've got to get that right. And I think we talked about it the other day, you know, to get it, to build a winning franchise, not only have to have a good owner, a good coach, good offensive coordinator, good defensive coordinator, good position coaches, because they all have, there's a lot of coaches on a football team. We all never, never talk about quarterback coach, line coach, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things that have to go together. It's kind of like putting the government together. And what they're doing now is you know, putting the pieces together to run the, the country. It's the same thing with a football team or basketball team or anything. Uh, you have to, you got to get that working, gelling, yeah. the cooperation, all minds, same mindset. I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. No. And, and, and so again, in one half, they failed. In the second half, at least they're seeing the error of their ways now. And before it gets any worse, just make the proactive move and see if you can save face. Uh, Jacksonville and Detroit, uh, and uh, I feel sorry for Jacksonville in this one. Uh, but look, the Lions, <laughs> you mentioned Goff with all the interceptions, and they still win the football game. It shows you how good they're going right now. Uh, uh, we'll get into Houston a little bit later, but one thing one thing I'd say about Detroit, and we do talk about their offense, their offensive line, the running game, how well Goff has played for most of the year. I mean, last year, last week wasn't so good, but we don't talk much about their defense. Their yeah. defense played pretty damn good. Yep. They shut some teams down, and they shut. Well, I know Houston's hurting, and you're seeing a regression from Stroud and everything, but you know they have offense. They the wide receivers have been hurt. Yep. But still, to hold a team like that on their own home field, scoreless in the second half was pretty amazing. Yeah, they're safeties right now. I mean, to, to, to the draft, again, going into the draft, they get Brian Branch uh, in the second round. That was a steal. He's been one of the best safeties in the NFL since last year. Uh, even Kirby Joseph's playing lights out. Aaron Glenn. They wanted to get rid of Aaron Glenn six months after they hired him, the fans, because they were new. The head coach was new. He hires Aaron Glenn. He's new. And so they're getting blown out of every game. But the difference that you saw once the season was over is, and the reason why you saw initial hope that first year is that you saw that after they had a lot of injuries on defense, it was a first year guy that by the end of the season, the team started to play better on defense. You could see that it was coming a little bit slowly, but it was coming. And then once they got healthy and started acquiring guys like Hutchinson and Brian Branch, well, again, this is why we talked about it. You know, you have to have not only coaching, but you have to have talent. And if you get both, well, that's when you get and strike gold, uh, which is what Detroit's going through right now. Jacksonville has covered four straight games this year, but Trevor Lawrence looks like he's going to be out again. So uh, that's a big blow. Mac Jones uh, will be starting again. I guess the only question is, how often do you give 13 points? It's a lot of points to give in the NFL, uh, Jim. I don't know how Jacksonville can score in this game. I, I really don't. Uh, um, it, it's it's going to be – it's gonna be, and Mac Jones is not and, – and if Detroit – after Detroit's slumber party in the first half last week, you know, they're going to be a little pissed at themselves. Yeah, they're going to pat themselves on the back the way they came back and they won the game. But I don't know how Jacksonville, Mac Jones, it, it's just, it, they don't have it. They need to fire the coaching staff. 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, they sh they should have done it after they came back from uh, London, um, and and try quite honestly. Even I know Ron Lawrence isn't playing; he has not looked anywhere near what they thought he was no. going to look like no. coming out of college. They thought this guy was the next, the second coming. Yeah, uh, he just no way. I mean, he and the, so right now they. With that said, coaching staff, all the coaches, and the the, the, the quarterback, are this team going to be looking for everything, including a quarterback? I know they, they can't get rid of Lawrence. They paid him too much money. So you're stuck. Yeah, I don't – you know, that's the tricky situation because on one hand, it's like, all right, got to fire Peterson. On the other hand, first what I want to know is I want to know what's going on with the rest of the staff. Is it – is it one of those things where Peterson can convince management, and rightly so, I don't know, maybe it is right, that he's got the wrong staff. I know what I'm doing. I've won a Super Bowl. I made a mistake here. Let me bring in the right guys. Give me another shot. I'd be willing to listen to that. But if it's, hey, it's it's me, it's my coaches, we can get it done, then, all right, no, you can't. just Because it's so hard to fire the guy and then bring in another guy because how many coaches has Trevor Lawrence had in just a short period of time? The kid's head must be spinning. Uh, but, you know, it's just not working. So, okay. Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Here's a big one. Oh, that's a huge game. Huge. And we talked about this the other day. And I have the official stats now. I said I'd have the official <laughs> stats, and I do. All yeah, right. there's tra there's definitely trends in this thing. Oh yeah, so the dog in this series in the pre in the previous twelve games prior to last season's finale in the regular season, and I mentioned that just like I did the other day. Remember, Baltimore rested all their players, didn't need the game. Pittsburgh needed to win to go to the postseason. It was everything for Pittsburgh, nothing for Baltimore. It actually was a close game, but Pittsburgh won and covered as a favorite. So before that game. The previous 12 games in the series, the dog, 9-3 and three straight up, 11-0-1 oh, against the spread. Like that. that is a lot in a series that is this closely, you know, contested in, in the same division twice a year. Steelers, meanwhile, have also won and covered every game as a dog this year, 3-0. and oh. And Baltimore, now this comes, of course, this is a good one from the magazine. They're 0-10 against the spread as a favorite of less than four in the first of back-to-back -back road games. Now, this is one of those trends that I would turn to Mark and I would say, well, why do you think that is, Mark? Do you think that's just luck? Or is there something in that that tells you that there's something about when Baltimore is playing their first of back-to-back -back road games that they're just there's something missing there. I mean, I I would normally say myself, I go, oh, that has to be a luck thing. But again, you know, I'll probably ask Mark this myself when I talk to him uh, tomorrow. I I would not be able to answer that question because it does seem random. But that's a lot of games, so it is. I, I don't know why that would be. This is the biggest game on Baltimore's schedule. But yeah, because the, I mean, the rest of the division is the Bengals and Browns are not threatening anybody. Yeah. The the thing is, in a game like this, Tomlin, you can't knock the guy. I mean, he's different. He, he approached. He definitely is a throwback coach. But Harbaugh's not a bad coach either. He's very good. Yeah. Um, but Pittsburgh has got to look at this. And these players know that they're the underdog. Yeah. Here we're playing at home. We've got a 7-2 and two record. We're beating everybody. We've got a, a quarterback that's playing back to his Seattle standards. We've got things going together. We've got wide receivers you can't cover on a 50-50 ball. You throw it up there, you know who's going to get it at – and we're an underdog at home. Yeah. And and quite honestly, I know we're looking at three, but we're looking at three with juice, which which means it's very easy to get a three and a half or a four on this game right now. It, without too much 
you know, juice because I'm looking at three minus 20, three minus 17, three minus 22. I mean, it'd be easy to take Pittsburgh plus three and a half or four in this game. That's a tough, that's tough. And these players know it. They know what this number is. And they say, we're being disrespected. Yep. We're, we're at home and we're not even favored. And here's another reason for disrespect. Remember, we went over the futures on Monday, just to remind anybody, or if you missed it, here's Baltimore at 6-1 to one to win the Super Bowl. Here's Pittsburgh at 25-1 to one to win the Super Bowl. And That's, the Steelers are ahead of the Ravens right now in the standings by half a game. Well, yeah, I, and I understand why, because Pittsburgh's got a tough schedule ahead of them, but, but – um, that is also disrespect. No question. Yep. All right. Needless to say, I like we've got, we've got some good games this weekend. Good. Yep. Here's another uh, game on the docket. Las Vegas and Miami. Miami is a seven-point favorite. Uh, it looks like Garden Minshew will start for Las Vegas. No Desmond yep. Ritter. There was some talk about giving Ritter the opportunity, but it's not going to happen. Raiders coming off a bye. They've lost five straight coming in. Uh, Miami had that big win on Monday to keep their season alive. And uh, remember, we talked about this on the show last Thursday, that Miami is one of those. We were talking about which two and six teams could make a run. Well, this was one of them because Miami's schedule. Miami's schedule, there's a couple of games in there that are going to be tough. But for the most part, you've got in their last, uh, whatever, nine games, you've got Vegas, New England, Jets twice and Cleveland. The other games are Green Bay, Houston, and San Francisco. So you've got three tough ones and five games that are right there. So if you all you got to do is steal, like let's say you go one and two on the tough ones, uh, you know you're 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 right there. They could actually they could actually win six games. Yeah, five because. Because yeah. you don't need to be, you could be, you could be just a game over five hundred in the AFC and make the playoffs this year. Well, the a, the AFC is definitely the weaker league this year. It and appears so. Top, when you look at the top eight eight teams, I mean, just there's just no comparison to the NFC. Just in quarterback, I mean, you know, in Miami is three and six, and Tua was out for four games. Yeah. So. And I was I was wrong about them on Monday. I didn't think I didn't think their defense would would play that well against the Rams, but the Rams really stunk up the place. So, uh, what do you think about Antonio Pierce? You think he's one and done? He should be one and done. Yeah, yeah. You think they should bring back John Gruden? Actually, in, in this cancel culture we have in this world right now, I think I think he's served enough penance. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, – I can't see him coming back to the Raiders. But, again, I'm going to start – maybe I'll do my first John Gruden to the Jets video this week. <laughs> you and those Jets. The That's Jets who are- I want. I want John Gruden to, to coach my team because I you know – You have to admit, the Jets were a better team when Sala was there. Oh yeah, well, oh yeah. They 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 made a desperate move because. But look, the fact is, it, it still did, doesn't hide the fact that the rest of the coaching staff is terrible. Um, Rams and Patriots. So here are the Rams just off the loss to Miami, four and a half over uh, the the red hot New England Patriots, who have won two out of three and covered three straight. So four and a half. Uh, the line was five and a half. So there's yeah, money coming in on New England. Well. You have rain, and you potential rain and wind. The Rams are not; they don't play in that kind of weather that often. And the way the Rams looked on Monday night, short trip tra- traveling across the country on on a short week. Yeah, good point. You know, it's yeah, it, taking. I mean, it's hard. I mean, this this is a three and seven football team. And you can't give them much credit for beating the Bears because the Bears are just a disaster. No. So, I mean, there's a lot of bad football teams in the NFL. And these, obviously, the in New England is one of them. And the Rams played bad. And when you go back to the Seattle game, 
if it wasn't for the Seattle coach smoking too much dope when he made the decision not to kick the field goal at the end of the game, they probably would have lost that game. So I think maybe we gave the Rams a little too much credit coming into this. Well, well, I guess we'll find out because uh, they can't lose this one. They lose I'm not this one. the Rams. Don't get me wrong. If oh, yeah. Like, there's only one side I'm going to take in this yeah. game. And that I agree. New England. But quite frankly, I think maybe the right bet there would be the under. All right. So the Rams. Uh, Patriot- I'm, not allowed to, I'm not allowed to speak until I see what Victor writes. <laughs> yeah. he's, he is definitely the master of totals. Uh, the Rams, by the way, four and one against the spread this year as a road. F- actually, be four and one against the spread their last five as a road favorite, and one and zero oh this season. All right, now you got the Colts and the those crappy coaching, uh, that crappy coaching staff in New York with the Jets. Uh, the Jets are a four point favorite here. We mentioned Richardson's going to start in this game. Uh, the Jets will be on a bye next week, so if they lose this one. Uh, I guess Woody Johnson can tell everybody not to show up in two weeks. Um, but uh, this is it for the Jets. Uh, they lose this one. Their season's over. They win it the way the AFC it is, and their schedule's weak. They're going to think that they still have a shot. Colts, meanwhile, same situation as we showed you. They're right there, uh, eighth team. Uh, uh, and, and they got a shot. But, yeah, Anthony Richardson, I just don't see it. I, this is going to be an ugly game. I, I don't. This is a game I can't believe I have to watch. Well – Let's talk a little bit about Anthony Richardson. And you you follow college ball a lot more than I do. I, I backed away from it this year because of all the realignment and the nil yeah. the portal. But now that I'm seeing it and they're getting into the finals, I'm going to be – I have some actually pretty strong plays this weekend in college football. Uh, but Richardson was drafted with very little college experience. But his talent – is incredible. He is one of the most talented players on the field every time he walks on a football field. He just is very inaccurate. He can throw a ball 90 yards and 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 hit the receiver, but if it's 10 yards, he might throw it 90 yards. <laughs> so what do you make of this kid? Well, that was the problem. I mean, that's the reason why when Josh Allen came out, uh, whatever it was, six years ago, five years ago, whatever, and he was a whatever, the third quarterback taken or something like that. The main reason was was that because, you know, Allen is sort of similar like Richardson, big guy, athletic, can run the ball, modern quarterback, but had no accuracy. And if you look back at the history of the NFL when you, as far as scouting the last 30 years or so, at least, you know, the new age, if your accuracy is not there in college, it certainly ain't getting better in the NFL because that doesn't work that way. You know, if you're not accurate at that level, you're certainly not going to increase your accuracy with the big boys, but Josh Allen broke that standard. It's the only one that has ever done it. So to ask Anthony Richard. Well, first of all, he had, he had the ability to learn, but he must have run into some good coaching. Probably so. Yeah. So does he have a shot? Yeah. Difference is Josh Allen did have more experience too. Anthony Richardson has had no experience. He hardly played at Florida. As you know, it was such a bad remedy for any potential idea of success. He was never going to have success this season. He doesn't have enough experience. They're just going to have to deal with it. That's all. And and it can't be – you're hearing the rumors already about, well, should they trade Anthony Richardson? I mean, these people are just lunatics. Anybody who would have thought – and let me say this. If the Colts even had the idea that they thought that Anthony Richardson would have success right away, right away, then they should be fired. You draft this guy because you you believe in, in time. In two, three, four years, he will develop into a good quarterback. This, but, the NF, this is where the NFL needs a G League. Yes. <laughs> and then they, and you, but they don't have one, so it has to be – they got to play them because Flacco's not the answer. Nope. Obviously, he had a, a tremendous run last year, amazing for Cleveland to get to what he did, but obviously he's fallen off a cliff this year. You've got to play the kids, see what you have, and, yeah. hopefully, and hopefully the little time off that he's had the last few weeks he's – 
he's picked up something because talent wise, like I said, yeah, he is super talented. They, they probably should never have started him right away. In, in all honesty, what they should have done is they should have had a much younger veteran quarterback that could actually, where you could say to yourself, you know what? Hey, this guy's not only going to start this year and Anthony's going to sit, but, you know, sort of like the Green Bay way. Yeah. But, Jordan hey, he may not start for three years. Yeah. And, and, and he learned and he's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. But, they rushed them and now they're stuck with it because once you rush the kid and once you start him, now you start messing up with his head about benching them. And then the fans I, get on them. And I know. think they're making, they're making the right decision, putting them back out there. Yeah. They let him finish the season. Hopefully he can stay healthy. That's another problem he's had. He doesn't stay healthy, but yeah, because uh, you, you are playing a susceptible team as well. You're, you're playing a team that you could easily find a way to win this week and get his uh, confidence going again. Uh, Cleveland and New Orleans. I don't think anybody's watching this outside of Cleveland and New Orleans. Well, actually, let me make a comment on this. This was quite interesting. Cleveland is coming off the bye, and you got Jameis Winston going back to the team he just played for, and they really never gave him much of a chance when he was no. there. And this game opened New Orleans 3. Yeah. So it didn't go from three to one by accident. Somebody came in and took the money on this thing. And they're taking Cleveland, the rest of the team, off a of bye. Jameis Winston coming back. But New Orleans just beat Atlanta, but they were lucky. Atlanta missed three field goals. And, you know, there was – but, I mean, it, I could not get that wrapped up in taking Cleveland because, I, you know, you just don't trust what you're going to get from them. I mean, they are not very good. They're two and se- both two and seven. The other team's three and seven. You're talking about these teams are just awful, awful, man. I mean, these records are terrible. Yeah, but you make a great point because I think that's the reason why I, I actually am going to take Cleveland because you get these, you know, uh, what do you, whatever you want to call it, revenge, or I'm going to have a big day today because I'm playing the team I used to play for, and that's what you're going to get. And this is what happens a lot, and you know it more than anybody, Jim. One of the things that you 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 fight for uh, as a gambler is you fight to try and say to yourself, "Man, I just I, I don't know. I, I, I you know you never know every week. Will my team come to play? You know if they're not playing like if it's not the Bills and the Chiefs or Pittsburgh and 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 Baltimore, will my team come to play? Will my players come to play? Or will this be one of those weeks where I'll lose money on my team because my team just didn't show up." Whenever you can get a situation where you know your team or your quarterback is going to come to play, that helps. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it helps. It gives you that extra little confidence that at least I know he wants to win. At least I know he's coming out there trying to beat this team. And that's what you have here. you got a situation where you know Jameis Winston wants to have his best game. And, and you know, and you got the, you got the Saints with a new head coach there now because they did fire the coach. So he did win. I mean, you know, he wants to win and keep his job. I mean. Well, he had the one win last week, though. And I think that's another thing is when you come out and you have that big rah-rah for that coach, the new coach, you can't have it for two straight weeks. Well, I'm not going to say can't. You might not. but you Well, I'm saying you can't have that same game. emotion, though. Right. You can still no. win, but the emotion will be a little less than it was last week, this, especially this, since last this, week was a division this game. This is one game if they scratched it and never showed it on TV or on the line sheet, I wouldn't even look at this. Yeah. <laughs> although, right. although I will say this, I sort of favor the over because you know what you're going to get from Jameis. He's going to throw the ball all over the place. But th- this is the caveat. Cleveland can run the football. They have, with their back healthy again, they can run the football. And I'm not too sure that New Orleans, the Saints, can stop the run. But the run also sets up the pass. So there's different ways of looking at this. Well, but I that's been the problem, indoor, though. Indoor, proper conditions, no rain, no wind. Carr can throw the football. Cleveland is a tra- they're, they're all, you know, trashy teams. I would favor the over. All right. Now let's get to the 4 o'clock games on the East Coast. And you have a big game in the West, Seattle-San Francisco. 
as we showed you. Both teams are right now on the outside of the playoffs. San Francisco's amazing. Pre a predictable six and a half point favorite in this one, based on the fact that they just played about a month ago and San Francisco won that one, even though the score uh, it was a little misleading. San Francisco really had control of the game. Uh, they have now beaten Seattle six straight, five of six covers, including the week six win and cover. Uh, Seattle, good news for Seattle. Not only does it look like they're going to get back their right tackle, who's been their starter since his rookie season, Abraham Lucas. He's been on pup all year. They've had a, uh, you know, a, a rolling uh, group of players that have come in after him that have not played well. You know, journeyman type guys at right tackle have not helped Seattle at all. So Lucas may play. He's been activated. He may play for the first time this season. They also should get DK Metcalf back. He missed the last two games. He had a whole bye week to get healthy, so he should return. So they might be after this bye as healthy as they've been all season, which is a big you know lift because they need it more than ever. Sitting at four and five, and also a very disappointing two six and one against the spread on the season. Uh, most of the sharps are saying there's only one side to bet in this game, and that would be Seattle. Um, mm -hmm. you got, you've got the division the revenge. You've got players coming back that are healthy. San Francisco has not played really – they haven't played sharp football all year long. And they're, they, they make a lot of special team errors, which is kind of amazing, actually, for a well-coached team. But this is the Super Bowl hangover thing that they are just yep. not just not there. They have not shown it this year. And there's no knock on Purdy. I think Purdy's played pretty well. Yeah, CMC was out. He played a little bit last week. They've had issues. They've had holdouts. Um, there's only one side if you're going to put your money on the game. I, I would definitely have to be on the Seahawks. And uh, the money line uh, could be interesting as well. You're getting 235 on the money line with Seattle. Now let's talk about Atlanta. Denver, long been about two and a half, I believe, all week. Uh, Denver uh, is at 500 after that uh, demoralizing loss oh. where they couldn't even oh. uh, get a kickoff on the field goal. Atlanta, six and four, coming off the loss. Uh, they got to buy next week, the Falcons do. Denver. Uh, they're in a good stretch after this. Denver will be at Vegas and then host Cleveland before a bye. So if Denver can win this week, they may be able to go on a three straight uh, run before the bye, which would put them in great shape playoff wise. This is the first time Atlanta has been a dog since week three. That's when they played the chiefs. Uh, Denver is three and zero straight up and against the spread in the favored role this season. They'll look to make it four and zero, And I think they're going to do that. Well, Sean Payton's a good coach, and he has rounded Knicks into a pretty good-looking quarterback. Atlanta doesn't put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and Knicks is a young quarterback, is a rookie. If you're not putting pressure on him, Knicks might have a hell of a good day. Now, this is the kind of game where you know my rule about one and two point favorites. And oh, yeah. This is the only way I play this is I play Denver money line. That's, That's not bad. Minus 142. This. It's the only way I play it. All right. We got some more big ones. Here's the biggest one of all the Chiefs and the Bills. We promised that I'd have the, uh, the exact trends uh, that I spoke about on Monday. Uh, and here it is the Kansas City Chiefs. In the last 15 games, under Andy Reid as a road dog, have won 13 mm. of 15, covering all 15 games. <laughs> that includes 10-0 straight up and against the spread in the last 10 as a road dog, 1-0 in that spot this year when they were a road dog at San Francisco. And that's why I don't care. I don't need to know anything else. The Chiefs were going to be one of my top picks of the week because if they're not, then I'm sorry. Then you're never going to use trends. But the other thing is, is if you take a look at the Bills, the Bills are dealing with some injury issues on offense. This is yeah. not a good week 
they do have they do have problems. Yeah. So Keon Coleman, the rookie receiver, is going to be out again. Nobody knows if Amari Cooper is going to be back. Dalton Kincaid, the tight end, does not look like he's going to play. Uh, and then throw in the fact, I mean, they've had a little bit of good news, but not for this week. And that is that their star middle linebacker, Matt Milano, um, now is basically returned uh, off the IR. And it's basically, he's got that window. He's got that 21 day window that they give you to decide whether or not he's going to be uh, activated or he's done for the season. So they're going to look at this as a big, big deal. Cause I'm not sure Buffalo can win a Super Bowl without your best defender. I, I just, I just don't know if they can do it. Um, he's such a big part of that team. Um, keep this in mind. Uh, this is also very important. Since 2020, these two teams have played a lot, a lot, and they're not division teams. The Buffalo Bills have beaten the Kansas City Chiefs in the last three regular season games since 2020. But the Kansas City Chiefs have beaten the Buffalo Bills in the last three games in the playoffs since 2020. Uh, and then the road team is 6-1 and one straight up and against the spread the last seven in this series. And usually I don't matter too much in the NFL with that, but these teams have played so much in the last several years, almost like they're division teams, that that might come into play a little bit. Um I, I am worried, even though I'm going all out on the Chiefs, I am worried about the fact that, that for some reason the Bills have their regular season number. Uh, but I just don't know how you go against Andy Reid as a road dog. I just don't know how you do it. Well, Andy was quite pissed at his team and called them out uh, the other day because they they have not been playing well, even though they're 9-0. and I know it's hard to say that. Undefeated team, the only one there is in the league. But they haven't been winning impressively. They don't look good. But And they should have lost last week. It was just yeah. a lucky break that they blocked the kick. But the, the thing is, Andy knows that they're capable of more. And they're, they're walking around as fat cats. We haven't lost. We won the Super Bowl a couple of years in a row. We're going for three-peat. These games don't mean so much. Nobody's going to beat us. We're going to be in the playoffs. We're going to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to win yeah. again. Well, so in that respect, Buffalo has a lot of incentive because they haven't got to the Super Bowl and their coach has not had, you know, tremendous luck in those big games. The other thing is Kansas City just got Pacheco back. Yeah, and he's probably that, not going to play this week, though. I'm not too sure. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that he's probably not playing, but well, it's Michael possible. Lombardi, Michael Lombardi this morning was thinking that he was. All right. Well, it's possible. But, and I don't and I don't have any better insight yeah. than that. You know, so But there's a chance. So yeah. I mean, he does give them a, another dimension, yep. which is a, a very quality dimension. Oh, big deal. Yeah. yeah. Um they they've been these teams, we think of these as high scoring teams, but they don't play that way anymore. They Buffalo has wound down their offense and and allowed the running game a little more grind because yep. well you you can't kill your quarterback running them all day so they had to change but their head coach hasn't had you talked about their head coach versus Andy Reid uh, and then you look at Spagnuolo on the defensive side we know who 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 he is and what he does. Um, very tough to give them points and like and you pointed it out it's it's hard to give this team points but they have been sleepwalking through the season they win the games but they've been sleepwalking but and and maybe it's the best thing for him as well not only Andy Reid calling him out but hey this is a team that thinks like you said and, and look they can't act like this shit because they've won Super Bowls in the last, what, four years. They can act that way. But you would think that they're going to see this and go, oh, we're two and a half, three point dog. We're the dog? We're, you, don't, you don't think we're, we're, we don't think we're going to beat this team? That, that, and and they'll, they'll play off of it because they played off of it many times before and have been able to find a way. It's to- going to, that's a hell of a game. Yeah. It's a hell of a game. 
Yeah. I mean, in, in a lot of respects, the best thing for the Kansas City Chiefs would be to lose this game. Yeah, it would be to get spanked. So, too. Totally wake them up. Yeah, wipe them out. Yep. All right. Wait. Here's the primetime games. And you get another big one on Sunday night. Chargers one and a half against Cincinnati. And you would think, wow, one and a half. The Chargers six and three, bank four and six, Chargers at home. But if anything, it just gives you an indication of the fact that, you know, the Vegas wisely, because the fans, they know Cincinnati is better than a four and six team, even though their defense is playing like a four and six team. But, you know, this is not a four and six type of team. Uh, if you look at it, they have covered four of the last five. Um, and they also, this is where I, I really love to take them because I've made a lot of money taking them over the last several years, including last week in a losing effort, 15 and four, the last 19 games as a road dog, including two and oh this season. So even though it's one and a half, it's as, pretty much as small as a road dog they can be, but you, you at least feel confident knowing they need to win the game. Chargers are not desperate to win the game. The Bengals are desperate to win the football game. Uh, they got a bye next week, and then uh, oh. they will take on Pittsburgh at home. So that'll be a big one to get ready for. T. Higgins is on track to play on Sunday night. So that's a big deal there. Uh, Chargers, meanwhile, uh, keep an eye on Khalil Mack. He did not play much last week. He's one of the better pass rushers in the league. Chargers defense has been fantastic this season. But keep an eye on that schedule with the Chargers because as much as I love Harbaugh, of course, and as much as I believe in what he's doing in L.A., the fact of the matter is they haven't, they, they, they've beaten a bunch of bad teams this year. And uh, they haven't had success against good teams. Now, are the Bengals a bad team or a good team? You know, the record says they're one of the bad teams, but we all know that they're really more of a good team. Well, they're they're good. They're they're an excellent team on offense, and they're a bad team on defense. And when it comes to head coaching, I mean, there's no comparison in your head in your coaching. No. The head coach is Harbaugh is way better than most coaches, um, and the quarterbacks are they're both excellent. Um, Chargers don't have some of the players they had a year ago. Uh, they're not of that quality. They were actually a better roster than a, a year ago, but they're because of the coach and they got rid yeah. of Staley, which was a mess. Um, this is a very, very hard game. Um, yep. I I don't I don't see either team stopping the other team. I I, I think I think it's going to be one of the offenses or is going to make one or two mistakes that's going to change the direction of this game. Because I think both offenses are going to do what they want to do. Yeah, again, I've taken the Bengals like every time they've been in this role for the last several years and have cashed a check just about every time. So I'm not obviously jumping off of that. Uh, but I can understand if anybody was a little bit worried if they just came into this and they had, they've never taken the Bengals as a road dog and all that stuff. I get that. Uh, because, look, the fact of the matter is we talked about this the other day. You have one team that's winning and they have a lot of confidence. And when they get into a tight situation, they know how to win. They got a winning coach. They feel they're going to win. They got another team, the Bengals, who are probably psychologically in their completely opposite field. We get into a close game, something's going to go wrong. We're going to we're going to find a way to lose this game. And and this is a quarterback and a team that actually over the years has not been that way. They've been very successful in a lot of big games because of Burrow and so forth. They've got to kind of get that going again. But that's how dangerous this team can be. Is that if they Burrow, if they, Burrow is one of the absolute best. He is incredible. And when you get Higgins and Chase, I mean, yep. they are just hard to stop. And that kid in the background, in the backfield, the I think the best thing that happened to the Bengals was for Zach Moss, their starting running back, to be lost for the season. Because they were babying that kid Brown in the backfield who, <laughs> yeah. can, who can go 80 yards every time he touches the ball. Yeah, he's a, he's a, that's a weapon. I mean, they yep. are. This is why an open two-and-a-half charge is down to one-and-a-half. And, a half. and uh, it, this is why. The, the, is there the, any? Is there? Is there anything? And, and that, you know, and the Chargers never get any home field advantage. No. the fans don't care. No. Anything that tells you 
with your experience that on Sunday, Sunday night, by Sunday night, the Bengals could be favorite? Oh, I would I would bet that they will be. Okay. Well, that's not good then, because then they're no longer a road dog. No, it, yeah, that I would bet that they will be. I I see enough money have come in on Mon- Cincinnati money line bets to think that this is going to push to the other side. Okay, well, that's definitely an important note. And then- however, however, I will say this: when it comes to coaching, the, the Chargers defense is going to be a be a lot better at yep. doing something positive than the Bengals defense. Yep. Which is a dumpster fire. And it's really hard to figure out because right. the, personnel wise, it's a lot of the same guys. So same coach, not sure exactly. I have to get on. I, I have a really good John Sheeran does a really good job covering the team. Uh, online. I got to get them on. I got to find out what's going on with that defense and why they're struggling so poorly. Uh, and then wrap up Monday night football, Houston and Dallas and they, watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cooper rush. What do you have? 45 yards. Now uh, they got to go to trade. Don't, don't you think Trey Lance deserves a shot? They have, this team has no chance. They can't run the ball. Their defense is hurt. you got a head coach that thinks he's a general manager. Or no, an owner thinks he's a general manager coach. I mean, this is a, this is a total disaster. This is Dallas is a total disaster. Yeah. Houston, good coach, good young quarterback, enough weapons. They need the wide one wide receiver to come back. He's coming back. That's big. Yes. Because I mean, you got to remember the second half last week is why the the um, Lions they didn't score. And no, there's a reason this is set. This is a two score line. Yeah. Like seven and a half point favorite on the road to Dallas, for God's sake. I mean, how many times does that happen? And yet the play is taken Houston. It has to be. And, and, and check this out. Let's not forget the fact that the Cowboys in their last two home games have lost by a combined 81 to 15. <laughs> They're, they have have they won a game at home yet? <laughs> yeah, they did. I think yeah, one game. I think Giants, maybe the Giants. Well, everybody beats the Giants. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dallas twelve and one against the spread is dogs of seven or more when they take on an opponent off a straight up loss. But this is one of those situations where I got to say I bet you in many of those games Cooper Rush and Trey Lance weren't the starting quarterback. <laughs> I, well, you, you're going to win that bet. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it looks like Nico Collins is going to be back, which is huge, even though no more digs. But Mechie looked good last week, which is a good sign. They Keeping need him healthy. They need a second receiver for sure. Yeah. And they've got depth at that at that position. So, you know, and Tank you're, Dell. You're, you're, I mean, your head coach, I give Houston the head coaching advantage. McCarthy's never been one of my favorites, but um, – and then the young quarterback, Stroud, even though he, you may say he's having a regression year, maybe it's a lot of the injuries that go along with that. But um, he, he's, I think he's a lot better than Rush. Before oh, I yeah. wrap it up, because we're right on time again at 58 minutes. It's amazing. For a one-hour show. That's why we're, we're professionals. Uh <laughs> We're going to go over probably because I got one question and you know what? I might wind up asking, maybe this is one of the debate questions that I'm going to get, I'm going to feed you and, and, uh, and, and Mark for okay. your debate video tomorrow. Okay. If you're Jerry Jones, do you seriously consider hiring Deion Sanders? I think he's going to hire Tony Romo. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> no, I, I don't it, well, Dion's going to – that's a whole – man, I'll tell you, Dion. who – I mean, he was – I mean, great. Colorado, they're going to – right now, if the season ended today, oh. Colorado being the Big 12 championship game. Well, it's a big jump from co- college to pros, but who was – I mean, he was a great NFL player, man. <laughs> he was unbelievable. 
Uh, what what talent? Now you know they just. Yeah, why not take it? Where, where are you? You got you got to rebuild the whole team. You're overpaying Dak. You made him the highest paid quarterback in football, the highest paid player in football. Yeah, and just not, recently, and he's yeah. not deserved to be that. And that meant offensive line problems, no running game, defensive issues. What are you going to do with Parsons? I mean, all the stuff yeah. that they have. They, they can have, use a reset. Yep. You know, you know, like I said, you have a lot of these rich people, they do things and they make a lot of money, whether they're lucky or geniuses or whatever. And I give them credit for that. But sometimes you just got to pass it off to people to know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. Well, and, you know what? I, I think it's actually a distinct possibility. Uh, I don't think it's as outlandish as one might think, especially knowing that anybody that – gets hired by Jerry. You're going to be one of those guys that understands that Jerry's going to be Jerry and he's going to, he's going to do his thing. And you got to be someone like Dion, someone that will understand it and deal with it. Well, uh, especially I, if you, I if you want a head coaching job know. in the NFL. I don't know that somebody like Dion, but there's a lot of place people that could have taken the head coaching job in Dallas that won't do it because they realize they're not going to be the head. Yeah. Coach. Yeah. The, the, the owner is the head coach. Yeah. So, McCarthy took it. He got the dollars, and he sits back and lets it happen. Not everybody's going to do that, and that's why Dion is one that might do it because no one else is going to is going to ask Dion Sanders to be a head coach in the NFL right now. It's just no one's going to do that. The only one that would do that would be Jerry Jones. But he doesn't need the money, and his ego's too high. I don't think. I don't. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't take it. If you're Dion, no, I would not. Even if it's to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Well, but you're not going to be the head coach. You're going to well, be a figurehead. That's my point. Well, again, as bad as we can look at someone like Mike McCarthy is concerned and what he's done, the fact of the matter is he's record-wise, he's actually done a pretty good job before this season. And they've had a ton of injuries this year, ton of injuries. Oh, it's a mess. It's yeah. definitely a mess. But they, in the offseason, they could have had – some players that yeah they could have had a running back that, yeah and the, the, but they went back to Gil Elliott oh yeah that was yeah that worked move. out that was a great move yeah, yeah. uh anyway we're going to talk more uh with uh, Jim tomorrow on the Playbook Experts YouTube uh, channel as well as uh, on Proline you could check that out uh so uh we'll have the link in the description for both of those channels. Uh, Jim also has his videos out, including uh, you can look out for Saturday when he takes a look at his final observations for week 11 in the NFL. He'll give you some picks and go over a bunch of other cool things that you don't want to miss. Uh, and then uh, I'll be back talking college football uh, on the Our Lads football channel. Uh, also, of course, uh, you can check me out elsewhere, including uh, over at uh, Playbook Experts or Proline. Uh, so that'll wrap it up, Jim. It was good doing this again. It's fun, and uh, this week I am starting to get more involved with the college because we're getting good. And I, I need somebody. To, I don't have to look at three hundred teams. I can now look at twenty. There you teams. go. So I've got quite a few strong plays in college this, this week, and I'm loaded with pros. NFL stuff. I got a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, a like I said, I really like the NFL this week too. So hopefully, it's a very successful week for us, and uh, we'll see everybody again real soon here. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, appreciate it. Oh, by the way, don't forget to order. Uh, if anybody is uh, watching here on the R Lads, or if you're watching on another channel, uh, don't forget to we'll have a link in the description. Order the R Lads Insider. A uh, bunch of reasons why, uh, and uh, you can check it out. A good reason that I like it is anytime you go to the R Lads uh, website, you don't have to worry about ad pop ups, which I think is maybe the best reason to get the Insider. But uh, there's a whole bunch of other reasons why check out the link in the description. You got a nice little video, 90 second video that explains exactly what benefits you get. So check that out for Jim fights from Greg DePama. We'll see you next time, uh, talking uh, NFL and hopefully real soon college football. Thank you guys.